Today we go on a true toy hunt around San Diego, get some rad news and some sad news and a surprise at the end. So make sure you check that out. Let's go. Today we are going on a true toy hunt. So let's get Lexi ready. And we have a few items that we are willing to sell or trade. One is a Star Wars Star Speeder 1000, a celebration exclusive that there were only 10,000 units made of. Right now it's worth 300 to $350 on eBay. And also this Darth Maul Black Series number two, selling from about 50 to $100 on eBay. And based on the condition of this one, I could get about $60 for it. So we packed up the car with the figures and of course Lexi and we're on our way. But first we had to make a pit stop. It's to my favorite barbershop in all of San Diego, Barbershop Heaven on Main Street. Okay, I need a haircut bad. All right, I'm gonna ask you a question. Am I your best client? No, did you fix your snowtrooper? I didn't even know you watched the channel. <laughs> Yes, I we fixed have the, to. Yes, I fixed the snow trooper. Wow. So we are heading back on the road to Ocean Beach, San Diego, a little beach community that really has a small town and laid back vibe to it. If you're ever in San Diego and want to make an afternoon of it here, there is Dog Beach where I often take Lexi for a nice swim. There is the awesome pier and beach and some food spots that you have to hit and one of them is Ho Dad's, known for their amazing burgers and shakes. Trust me, make this a pit stop for sure. Best burgers in town. And then afterwards, hit up my favorite ice cream shop. You'll know where it is just by smelling the amazing waffle cones that they make fresh in store. But we're here for one reason, to search the antique shops for vintage. Now a few years ago, before I started collecting, I used to see vintage Star Wars in the antique shops all the time. In fact, my first vintage Minton card, the Made in Mexico Gamorrean Guard, I bought at a comic shop right here in Ocean Beach called Galactic Comics. And sadly, when I stopped by there a few weeks ago, it was closed, but the inventory was still inside. And today, even sadder. The store is not only locked, but the store is completely empty and there are vending items outside that are tagged for shipment and clearance. So the store is permanently closed. But as for the antique and vintage shops, those are still plentiful. And walking through the nooks and shops of Ocean Beach, there are a ton of shops to stumble upon. And today, I really took my time to search through most of them. The owners of the shops are great people and if you take the time to talk to them and get to know them and tell them exactly what you're on the hunt for, they're gonna direct you to exactly what you're looking for and when people come to sell items, they'll be more inclined to buy them and hold them for you if they know you are a returning customer who likes to browse the shop often for treasures. And that's exactly what I've been doing lately. It's honestly therapeutic to do that, even to spend a free hour in a couple shops and chat with the owners. But today, we did happen to walk into one of our favorite antique shops and ask the owner if they had any vintage Star Wars goodies. And to my surprise, they actually had something. So they led us to the back and showed us to where they keep the vintage toys. And we were able to check out two things, a hammerhead that came with a blaster and a Ramba Power of the Force coin. I asked them how much they wanted for both. And for the hammerhead, she said she could part for that for $10. And the coin, she could sell for $3. And before I can tell her that the coin is definitely worth more than that, she said, look, you are looking for treasures. And if it's worth more than that, then you just found a treasure. If you're gonna enjoy it, then it's worth it. I was floored and went to buy the items immediately. And I do have a question about the hammerhead blaster, but we're gonna examine that once I get back into the studio. So now let's look at what we got from the antique dealer. Hammerhead first debuted in 1978 in the second wave of the Star Wars cardbacks on the 20B-backs. 
He was also available in two playsets. The first one was available in 1978 in the Sears exclusive Cantina Adventure set. And the second was available in 1979 on the Creature Cantina playset from Palatoy in a free mail-away offer. He comes with the blue-black Imperial Blaster. And the one that we picked up with this figure looks like to be the V-1B or the Cater M4A or M4B. And we did the light test just to verify that it's a blue-black blaster. The figure at first glance looks great. No major paint loss on the eye and the figure hasn't been damaged over time. But on closer examination, the feet is where I see the most cosmetic damage. There is a lot of blue paint on the sides on the rear right foot. And looking at the bottom of the feet, this figure's feet was painted blue. The correct color of the feet is supposed to be the same as the arms and legs. Someone must have painted the bottom of the feet to know which figures belong to who. And parents would often do this when their kids would go over to people's houses or take their figures to school so they could tell which figures belong to who. And then there is the articulation of this figure. Often you're gonna hear collectors say, uncracked limbs. That refers to how tight the figure's arms, legs, and even head is, or in the case of the Rancor, the wrists. Basically, anywhere there's supposed to be articulation. If the figure's articulation is very tight and doesn't want to move, that's a good thing and it's referenced as having uncracked limbs. If a figure's limbs or points of articulation is too loose, you can say that the figure has very cracked limbs. In the case of this this hammerhead, the head is very cracked and swivels on its own. The arms and legs, although not as loose, aren't uncracked and can be moved with the slightest touch. And if I was to get this figure graded, I would receive a very poor grade. But for our display, this is perfect and we were able to find it on a true toy hunt and looking at the Star Wars tracker for recent past prices. It looks like the high prices are coming in at around $40 and the lows are averaging at the $23 mark. So we saved a good $10 on this find, which is not bad at all. And just a disclaimer about the prices that I give on this show. This is the year 2022. So when you see this in the future, even a month from the original air date, the prices only reflect when I recorded this episode. The real thing I'm showing you is to always look up market prices on your own and know the current market as you buy each action figure. So for the Ramba coin, the coin we received is in very good condition. And again, looking on the Star Wars tracker, high prices for this coin are averaging $30 on the high end and $22 on the low end. So for us getting this coin for $3 was amazing and definitely a cost savings that we're looking for on this run. And getting breaks on price is always welcome, especially looking at how costly some of the vintage prices are. And you know I love reading the back of the coins and the back of this Ramba coin reads, an Ewok warrior who uses simple Ewok weapons to protect the planet Endor. Okay, a simple description for a simple Ewok. So let's place this coin in a protective case. And these cases I have for sale down there in my description of this video. Down in my descriptions are links for supplies that you may need for your collecting journey. And when you click and buy using my links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And also, join me on all my other social media. The links for those are on the homepage of my YouTube channel. And we finally have our own merch store. So head on down to the descriptions to get your hands on some Padawan collector gear. And yes, there's even some Rami and Jaws gear. So now we're headed back to one of our favorite vintage shops in San Diego, TC's Rockets. And we have our Star Tours Star Speeder 1000 and our Darth Maul Black Series in hand to see what we can get for these. 
I sell or get store credits for items here all the time, and the people who work here looked up the prices, which is what we did earlier as well, and we came to a great agreement for store credit. And it just so happens that they still had a mint on card that I had my eye on from the last time I went in. And this Chewbacca was being sold for $140, and we made a deal for $130. So let's take a look at this Chewy a little bit closer. First off, this figure is made in Hong Kong. This is the 65A card back. So what makes it an A? Well, right here, there's two blacked out characters. Since these toys were released before the May 25th, 1983 premiere of the Return of the Jedi movie, Lucasfilm didn't want to show some of the new characters that might give away plot. So in this case, the Ewoks were blacked out. It's just an early form of spoiler suppression before the internet. In later toy releases, on the 65B card backs, the Ewoks would get the blackout removed. So looking at the card and figure itself, the card is unpunched, but you can see signs of the peg hole tab starting to break free, although it's still very much intact. It also has a price sticker, but it's not causing any harm to the art nor the cardboard. There are some paper frays on the top left corner and some hits to the sides on the left side as well, with minor dings along the edge of the cardboard all around the sides, but nothing that takes away from the art of the card or the card's structural integrity. Close to the upper left of the bubble is a little scuff, and looking at the color of the litho, the color has not faded and looks very vibrant. There's a vein running along the corner of the left side just under the figure ID number. There is a slight bow in the card and the card does not lay completely flat. Now looking at the bubble, the bubble is very clear for a Hong Kong figure and most of these Return of the Jedi cards that were made in Hong Kong went through a fire retardant process which often made the bubble very yellow over time. And since this one is very clear, that's a huge plus. But there is a ding in the top right of the bubble and a slight ding in the top left of the bubble. There's some sticker residue on the lower bubble itself and this is residue that gets points taken off of it if I were to send this in for a grade. So if you have a price sticker on your vintage mint on cards and it's not causing any damage to the cardboard or bubble windows, it's best to leave them on as points are not taken away for price stickers. Or at least that's how CAS and AFA have it explained on their sites. And the figure and accessory itself looks in fantastic shape. So let's place this Chewbacca into an acrylic for safekeeping. And let's mark this off our mint on card list. I'm collecting the Return of the Jedi mint on cards, so I'm gonna replace the checkoff art from the original Star Wars card back to the Return of the Jedi card art. And I got this figure for a very fair $130 from TC Rockets in San Diego. And finally, let's place this on our shelf. And ladies and gentlemen, I finally got my first submission from CAS back. So next episode, we get to reveal those grades. And just for a quick refresh, it was a red hair Hoth Leia, two sand people, and a Dianoga trash monster. I'm super excited, and it took seven months to get those back, so join me for that episode. But if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And please subscribe if you want to see more Star Wars collecting content from me. And also, hit that notification bell so you know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.